Hello everybody, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. This is the video for February 3rd. I'm here with my dog here in the classroom. Her name's Andy. She's a year old and she's awesome. Anyway, yeah, you heard me say your name. Okay, this is going to be a little bit herky-jerky. I'm going to do this handheld. I wanted to go through these 22 volcanoes that you got the other day from me. And give you a little, just a Google field trip tour, looking at them and talking about some of their stories. Okay? And if I have any luck, I'm going to make this into another Ed puzzle so that you can be rewarded for watching my videos because I've really been disappointed with how many people don't watch my lessons. There's nothing I can do with you if you won't watch my lessons. All right, here we go. On a more positive note. Here is Mount St. Helens, number one. And these are numbered only... They're, they're random order, okay? Totally random. This is just my list. Here's Mount St. Helens in Washington. It blew up when I was in eighth grade. That's what it looked like before. And then look at the after. It blew its top and side off. Its north side went out, okay? If you go to this side of the sheet, you'll see it killed 57 people. Most of those people were on the north side and they thought they were safe. They were well outside of the evacuation area. And then the volcano's side blew out and got them. Most of the people who died were killed by the mud flows that came from when it melted all that glacier. All right, that's number one. Okay, number two, Mount Pele. So I'm just gonna go back. See what we get. Mount Pele. All right, now this one, it killed 30,000 people in 1902, okay? One of them, one of the survivors was that convicted murderer we talked about in class, okay? This is the village the way it looks now. It's been rebuilt, okay? The sad story about the, this was the volcano gave fair warning that it was going to blow up, but the mayor was worried about people abandoning the city, and he talked everybody into staying, and he said, look, my wife and kids and I are staying here. And they, he convinced the town to not evacuate. And that night it blew up and killed everybody, including the mayor and his wife and kids. Anyway, okay. Um, you can see the volcano. All right, that's number two. Paracutine. This is a kind of a cool one, okay. Paracutine. This has got a famous story behind it. When I get you here, you'll see pictures like this. A church sticking up out of a lava flow. Okay? There. It's famous. Okay? What happened was a Mexican farmer out working in his fields hit a spot with his plow and ash and smoke started coming out of the hole. And he freaked out and he ran back into town. Parcoutine, let me see, is number three down here. And, uh, I forgot, there's number two, Mount Pele. Anyway, the, the Mexican farmer ran back to town thinking he'd done something terrible. Um, and the volcano grew and 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 grew, and grew, and grew until eventually it buried the village. It wasn't his fault. He probably sped the volcano up by a few minutes, maybe a day or two. But it was going to happen anyway. Okay, let's see. You can see more of the village. Okay. It wasn't his fault, but... I'm sure somebody thought it was. Okay, Hawaii. Oh my goodness, Hawaii. The Hawaiian Islands, number four. These are the most isolated islands in the world. Okay. It's 2,400 miles to the mainland. That's 2,400 miles between Hawaii and like California. Okay. I'm going to walk over to the back wall. Andy's probably going to come with me. Hey, Andy, what are you doing? You want to come see Hawaii? Here's what Hawaii looks like if the water was clear, you could see, okay? Here's what I think is neat about Hawaii. If somebody ever asks you what the tallest mountain in the world is, everybody thinks it's Everest, it isn't. Everest is the highest. That's not the same thing as tallest, okay? If you measure from the bottom, the floor of the Pacific Ocean to the, to the peak, that is 
30, let me get the right here, 31,824 feet tall, 31,000, almost 32,000 feet tall. Everest is only 29,000, okay? The difference between tallest and highest is, you know, I'm, I'm not that tall. I'm 5'7", and I've got students taller than me. And if I ask who's the tallest person in the room, okay, it's not going to be Fiscus, right? But if I have a, the tallest kid in the room stand up, and then I stand on a table, I'm the highest. There's a difference between tallest and highest, okay? If I stood on this table carefully, I'd be much taller than the tallest student I've ever had. I'd be, I, sorry, I'm, I'd be higher than the tallest student I've ever had, but I'm not that tall, okay? Anyway, that's Hawaii. All right, the Aleutian Islands. That's number five, okay? This is a, if you ever watched the show Deadliest Catch, those sh crab fishing boats are based out of, there's one of the islands, okay? They're all volcanic. You see that chain of, those are the Aleutian Islands, okay? All right, next, there's another Aleutian. All right, Tonga, New Zealand, okay? That's a super, super important place. Remember Tonga? That's where Mother Nature tipped her hand, okay? This is part of the Ring of Fire, okay? Let's see what they look like. Probably just little chunks of paradise, Tonga Islands. Sweet. Isn't that gorgeous? That looks volcanic, because it is. Okay. All right, the Tonga Islands. All right, next. Ooh, one of the most famous mountains in the world, one of the most famous volcanoes in the world. Number seven, Mount Fuji. It's one of, it's one of Japan's national symbols. Mount Fuji-san. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Gorgeous. See it there in the background behind Tokyo? It can still blow up someday. Okay, beautiful volcano. Okay, um, number eight, Mount Hecla in Iceland. Mount Iceland has lots of volcanoes, but we'll go Mount Hecla. Looks fairly serious, doesn't it? Okay. Big. Okay. And remember, Iceland is right on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where that's a blister sticking up out of the middle of the Atlantic. And Hecla is one of the one of the places where Earth bleeds magma. Ooh. Okay. Now I was watching um, Wheel of Fortune tonight, and the episode was in Seattle. So this is one of the most beautiful volcanoes in the world. It's right outside Seattle. This is Mount Rainier. Okay. It's super dangerous. It's going to blow up again someday. Here's some funky clouds over its peak. Okay. Here it is at sunrise or sunset. Talk about gorgeous. Ooh. As long as it doesn't blow up. Okay. Ooh. I clicked on this here. Look at that place. Okay. So if it blows up, that threatens Seattle. And Seattle is Microsoft and Boeing, two of our biggest companies in the world. Okay. Mount Rainier is not to be uh, ignored. Okay. Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius, number 10. Remember, these are in no particular order. 
This is the volcano that went kerblooey and took out Pompeii and Herculaneum. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Big city of Naples, Italy. About 2 million people live near this thing. They're all in danger. It blows up every few years, but it hasn't blown up big for quite a while. Okay. Um, here you can see a path, a road going up to the crater for tourists. Okay. Um, just for the fun of it, I'm going to type in Pompeii. You'll remember the Pompeii plaster people. You've seen them in several different video clips. Okay. Remember, he's one of the most famous ones. Uh, the only thing that's real here is the shape. The person's body has been dissolved away by the acid that was in the ash. That person died. Horrible, quick, horrible death. Okay. And the acid dissolved away. Here's a horse. Okay, let me see. There's a there's a famous dog. I can see find the, see if I can find the dog. <clears throat> I'll type in Pompeii dog. It was chained up, and you can see it's chained, and it's, it's, you see it? Famous. Did not die a good death, that's for sure. It was not a pleasant way to go. Okay. Um, okay. Mount Pinatubo. This is, we left off the video on Tuesday, Mount Pinatubo. This is the volcano that blew up in 1991. on the other side of the world and screwed up the weather so badly that people in Minnesota were killed in the flooding that it caused two years later. Okay, here's, look at the, the smoking hole that it left. Okay. Look at that. The van booking it to get away as the pyroclastic flow comes toward them. Okay. It's a serious, serious volcano. No, oh, there, look at this. During the eruption. Put ash over 12 miles up. That's way bigger than an atomic bomb. Way bigger. All right. Ooh, okay, get ready for beauty. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's very, very famous. Crater Lake. This is the cleanest water in America. Okay. I'm going to click on images. It's clean because we, people haven't figured out how to screw it up yet. Okay. We keep, I don't think any boats that aren't electric are allowed in it. Um, it's very, very clear, cool. I should say cold, deep. Let me see if I can find you a neat picture of it. That little volcano peak in the middle is called Wizard Island. That's Wizard Island. Let's see if I can. It's such a pretty place. So many people take postcard pictures of it. Oh, here's a view from up above. Okay, you can see where the big volcano has blown up and it began to grow a new little baby peak there. Okay, this is a extreme Northern California. Okay, remember on the quiz I asked about Southern California not having volcanoes? Well, Northern California does. But California is an awful big state. All right, so that was Crater, that was crater Lake number 12. Number 12. All right. Moving right along. 13. Tierra del Fuego. This means land of the fire. Okay. Extreme southern South America. Tierra del Fuego. I don't really know what I'm going to get when I see a picture on the internet of Tierra del Fuego. Land of the fire.
Well, I see mountains. What do you know? Okay. All right, next. This is my favorite volcano name. It took me lots and lots of practice to say it right. Popocatepetl. I'll say it again. Popocatepetl. It looks like Popocatapetl, but it's Popocatepetl. You have to put your the emphasis on a different syllable. Popocatepetl. Okay. Uh, this is a monster volcano outside of Mexico City, one of the biggest cities in the world. Everybody calls it El Popo. Popo. Hey, what do you know? Popo Catepito. And it blows up every few years and it gets people's attention. Uh, here you can see the city and the volcano in the background during an eruption. Okay. If that thing got really, really cranky, that would threaten millions of people. You know how you get a million people, millions of people evacuated quickly? You don't. If you want to kill more people than a volcano, could you yell, run for your lives, and cause panic and, ugh, yeah. Here you can see, see the, this, you can see where the eruption and lava is splattering. Okay, not a good place to be. All right, Popo. All right, Mount Hood. You see, Popo is, that's 14. Okay, Mount Hood number 15. Here we are back in the northwest. Mount Hood. Another big volcano in the northwest part of the country. How am I doing on 16 minutes? Sorry, look at this beautiful thing. Mount Hood. They're pretty when they aren't blowing up. This is near Portland. Look at that thing. Gorgeous. Look at that. Okay, that's Mount Hood. All right, number 16, Mount Kilimanjaro. If I was allowed to climb, if you were gonna buy me the ticket, I could go anywhere in the world to climb a mountain. I would pick Kilimanjaro. It's the world's most climbable big mountain. Okay. There you can see some elephants. You can see the mountain in the background. The reason it's so climbable is it's not that not incredibly steep. Okay. There are tour groups that if you go and buy, and you can see some other peaks. Okay. If you you can buy a tour ticket and it'll take you a week to get up the mountain. And what they have you do is you walk up the volcano slowly in a giant spiral path. There's actually several paths. Let me see if I can. I'm typing in path. See if we what we get. Um, there's different routes. Okay. Uh, you can see the paths here on this map. Okay. Different tour groups will take you up different ways. Um, people that aren't even trained for mountain climbing, you, just regular people like you and me, can make it up Mount Kilimanjaro. You take your time. Here's a group walking up. You see how far they have to go to get to the peak. They, you spiral your way up slowly and let your body get used to the, to the oxygen levels because they're going to drop. And I think it takes about five days to get up and two days to come back down. Okay. See what I can find you for more pictures. For people that don't think that the world is getting warmer, they have some explaining to do because old pictures of Mount Kilimanjaro show a lot more snow on it than it ever has anymore. Eventually, Mount Kilimanjaro is not going to have any snow on it ever because the world is warming. You can just you can show them pictures and say, "Hmm, I wonder where the snow went." Yeah. Um, look at how big it is. All right, that's Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. Mount Shasta, number seven. Now, here was Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. Mount Shasta, here we are bouncing back to the northwest. Mount Shasta, another super photogenic volcano. Yeah. 
in the Northwest. And uh, see the UFO shaped clouds? Big mountains will have, will make clouds like that. They're quite special. They're called lenticular clouds. And some of them look super UFO like, freak people out. There's Mount Shasta. There's more of those funky UFO clouds. Look at that picture. Wow, pretty. All right, Mount Etna. Super, super, super active volcano. Uh, near Italy, it's on an island near Italy. Okay, it erupts all the time. Oh, cool. That's cool. Okay, look at the lava flows coming down. Okay, that was Mount Etna. We got this back to there. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, I've got a surprise for you at the end. Mount Mayan is another dangerous volcano in the Philippines. Okay, very, very symmetrical. You can see, look how it's shaped. It's obviously a volcano. Okay, look at that, a night. Okay, Mount Bayon over here again, number 19. All right, number 20, Dolores. Okay, now, this is the volcano that Stan Williams and the scientists were studying. They went down in the crater because they thought it was safe, and it got them. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. There's the city that is threatening. Okay. All right. Twenty one Krakatoa or Krakatoa. Kind of a funny name. All right. It blew up in 1883. Uh, think Wild West, that time period. This is supposedly the loudest explosion ever heard on Earth. Okay? It was an incredible, incredible eruption. Okay? The island was mostly destroyed. It's rebuilt itself somewhat. Here's what it looks like now. Okay? There's an eruption at night. When it blew up, it made a tsunami. And the tsunami from its eruption in 1883 killed 36,000 people. Just the tsunami. It was an incredibly violent eruption. Okay, and that is way over here, 21 Krakatoa. Okay, over here on Indonesia. Okay, and how you doing, Andy? All right, next, last one. Here's the surprise, number 22. Nevada del Ruiz in Colombia, okay? Number 22. See where we're at, okay? Now, this is the one, if you remember the video from, let me get right here, from Tuesday. Um, this volcano, Nevada del Ruiz, made, just had a tiny little burp, a heat eruption. The people 30 miles away didn't even hear it. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a loud boom. But the heat flash from the eruption melted its ice cap, the glacier on top, and started a mud flow that came barreling down through the city of Armero and killed 23,000 people. Okay? That happened in 1985. You're like, okay, because that's ancient history. Yeah, but check this out. This is from a newspaper from 2019, which is not that long ago. And the headline says, this could only happen in a movie. See these two women? The younger one was one week old when her when the city of Almero was wiped out by the mud flow. She was one week old. They somebody found her, probably covered in mud, didn't know who she belonged to. They gave her 
to the Red Cross to see if they could find a family, and she was adopted by somebody. Okay? She always wondered if she had a family. They, they did a DNA test on her, and surprise, surprise, 33 years after the eruption, they say, guess what? You have a sister who was a, a, just a few years old during the eruption. Nobody, they didn't know they each other existed. Can you imagine what it'd be like to find out one day, oh, by the way, you have a sister, okay? So these two were reunited with DNA technology, okay? I have the whole story here. You could look it up. Anyway, that's kind of cool. Sort of a, a small happy ending and a ginormous tragedy. All right, I'm at 25 and a half minutes already. I'm going to end stop here and see if I can figure out how to do an Ed puzzle.